All right, welcome back for the final video that covers how to make a comic book page in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, this final stage is literally about finishing this page up, adding the final touches, you know, making it all just one complete um, finished product, basically. Now, the one thing that I really wanted to look into was panel three, uh, this one right here. This one that appears and disappears. That one I really want to fix because it's not working with the page. This so far is fine. I'm happy with this uh, and I don't think much has to change. Maybe some text balloons if I really wanted to change stuff, but panel three really does need some work. Now, pretend kind of like that you handed this in into your publisher and your publisher looked at it and said, okay, fine, we like the page, but uh, you know, fix it up a bit, especially in panel three. That's that's kind of like how I approach the idea. Um, that you know, sometimes you're just gonna have to fix things. Sometimes you you know you start in one direction and then you realize that you know actually it doesn't work. So we're gonna get back into this, and I'm going to take a completely different approach. So I'm going to clean up the background considerably. I'm going to change the entire color setup actually. And I've been thinking a bit about this uh, while I was taking a break. I'm going to basically focus on these colors that I originally used for the bad guy. So let's see if they're visible right here. These colors right here are what going to, what I'm going to be using here. Uh, and I'm also going to change the background a lot. Uh, and making it m a little bit more artistic. See, that's the thing about comics. You don't have to recreate everything just like in a film or something, like in a storyboard. Uh, you can be a bit more artistic. You can change backgrounds uh, or take away parts of backgrounds. Like here with Detective Logan, he's running. There's no background behind him. It's just so that the reader can focus on Detective Logan only and his movement of running. Uh, well, I want to do the same with this um, panel 3. I want to completely change uh, the background. I'll keep the, the, the main character, I'll keep the character just where he is, but I'm definitely going to make some changes and make it more like from his perspective, what he's feeling, get his emotions into the background. Uh, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a different approach, but I really do think it will work. And yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know. So. In order to get this done, uh, I'm going to speed things up and I'll pause wherever necessary when I think that it's interesting to give you guys uh, a little bit of a, an insight into what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And okay, so here we have just finished the changes to uh, the third panel. So as I said, I, you know, I wanted something less busy and you know a bit more structured. It also looks a bit more modern. You know, it, it can easier go with the times of today. I feel. Just to quickly have a look and see what the previous one looks like. There you go. Uh, if I put them right next to each other. I mean, I, I can immediately see the difference. Also here, the lighting wasn't uh, added yet, so you have some additional lighting and stuff. But, you know, all in all, really, this just looks very chaotic versus this, that, you know, it really feels like there's two different worlds. You've got his world, which is more 
uh, you know, sinister, more electronic, uh, more, you know, artificial. And then you've got the real world, you know, in these other panels where, you know, you've got a different color palette. And I kind of like that because it created that contrast between the two worlds. Uh, and, and also his mind, his point of uh, viewing things and, you know, what's going on in the world of Detective Logan and Naomi. All right, that's it for now. Uh, I'm just going to add some final little things like... Um, maybe some text here and there to indicate like sounds for example so uh, the target is putting his two fingers on this type of watch well I just wanna add some beep sound to it some text maybe over some some of the banners that are on the street uh, just some minor little things here and there let's uh, let's get straight to it And there we go. I feel like we've just reached the end of our journey. The page looks pretty much finished to me. Let's uh, zoom in on it and have a closer look. So this is what you can achieve with this great piece of software. From the early layout stages to the final steps after coloring, I found that Clip Studio Paint always had a solution to problems that I might have had in other software packages. With amazing tools such as the endless perspective rulers that you can just create for any of your panels, the very useful 3D object library that just comes with such a handy amount of different poses, the very good G-Pen that is very powerful for creating nice ink and, and it's very unique upon itself, and so many more awesome features. And of course, what also made it possible for this page to look like this was the magnificent solution of AstroPad, which allowed me to draw with great precision and no lag at all on my iPad Pro. Creating precision lines means everything when drawing comics, and the fact that AstroPad could turn my iPad Pro into a professional art station that allows me to use great software packages like this one, and on top of that, at such an affordable price compared to what's out there on the market, trust me, that makes a world of a difference. And as you can see, the end result still looks just as good. So I hope these six videos have provided you with some inspiration to get started on your own comic book pages. And maybe I might have even inspired you to pick up this great piece of software and just give it a go. I promise you that you won't regret it.